welcome to Solid Rock, where we share truth, live grace, and grow together. We're so glad that you've joined us today. If you're a first time guest, welcome. We're so excited to have you here. Please take a moment to fill out our Connect card, available under the seat in front of you, or online at solidrockjc.com forward slash connect. This is a great way for us to get to know you a little better. Now let's talk about giving. There are several ways to give today. You can give online via the app or by using our website. You can also text to give by sending the word give to 573-505-0058. Your generosity helps us support our church and our ministries. So thank you for your contributions. Exciting news for our students. Next weekend is fall retreat at the campgrounds. Sign up this Wednesday if you want to go with us. Also, Youth Rock is going to Fisher Farms on October 30th at 6 p.m. It's going to be an amazing evening filled with fun and fellowship. This evening is free for all students grades 6 through 12. In honor of Veterans Day, we want to recognize those who've served in the United States Armed Forces. If you'd like to share a photo of your veteran, please send one photo along with their rank and area of service to admin at solidrockjc.com. Get ready for some friendly competition at our Sheepdog Chili Cook-Off. Join us on Sunday, October 20th at 1 p.m. in the gym. The cost is just $10 per person. If you're interested in entering the chili competition, please visit guest information or email kenny at solidrockjc.com for more details. Mark your calendars for our child dedication service on Sunday, October 20th during the 11.30 a.m. service. If you'd like to have your child dedicated, please sign up at guest information or through the Solid Rock app. Thank you for being here with us today. Now let's stand to our feet and prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning, Solid Rock. The Lord is in the place. Is he not? He's in this place.
this morning, church. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. Turn around to your neighbor and tell him, hey, my God's alive today. Come on, tell him right now. He's not dead. He's alive. God bless you this morning. Have a seat. Oh, it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. And welcome to our service today. Thank you for being here today. And uh, it's, it's just a great day. Amen. It's just a great day to serve the Lord, great day to be in the house. To all of our online family and friends, we want to say welcome. So glad that you're joining us today. We pray God just bless you, that he bless your week. Whenever you're watching, we pray that he just pour out his blessings upon you, uh, that he does a great work for you. Amen. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, we want to say welcome to Solid Rock. We are so glad that you're here. My name is Pastor John. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and uh, I love meeting new people. So if you're new, come meet me because I'm the guy that'll smile and make you. I just love, I love new people. I just do. I love people. All right. And so thank you for being here in the seat right in front of you. There's a get connect card. We invite you to take that card to fill that card out. It's a way for us to connect with you. It's a way for us to get to know you. We're not going to bug you or, or anything of that sort, but uh, fill that card out. Let us know how you found out about us. If you have a prayer request, and this goes for anybody in the building, take that card, write that prayer request down. Why? Because we believe in the power of prayer, and, and Jesus still answers prayers today. Amen. Miracles still happen. He still changes lives. So if you have a prayer request, write it on that card. I promise you it is, it is kept confident. Our, our pastoral staff and, and members of our prayer team get that, and we pray over those needs. We believe with you by faith that God is going to do the work in your life. doesn't matter how big or how small. Can I tell you something? I've prayed a prayer before and said, God, I can't find my car keys. Anybody else with me? And I mean, you tear the house apart. And then all of a sudden, they're sitting right there on the counter, and you're like, Lord, I know those weren't there. You made those appear, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And then my wife says, really? Yes, honey, it was Jesus. That's what it was. It's not the man's eyesight. It was Jesus, okay? But look, here's what I've learned. If it bugs you, it bugs your father, and he wants to answer your prayer and meet your need. So write that down on that card. Here's what you can do with the card if you're filling it out, visiting with us. Any of the given receptacles by any of the door, you can just drop it in. You can leave it there. Or what we'd really love for you to do is take it back to guest information, turn it in there. They're going to be able to answer any questions about the church, and they're going to give you a free gift for being here today, all right? And it is not an 8 by 10 glossy of our pastor. I promise you, you will not get one of those today <laughs> it's a coffee cup with his face on it no I'm teasing it's not it's really not <laughs> but we're so glad that you're here amen well I'm thankful that you're here hey last week <laughs> you want one of those coffee cups don't you last week was praise in the park and we had how many enjoyed praise in the park last week yes <laughs> so we got a quick video we want you to watch concerning praise in the park all right Yeah, come on, give the Lord a good hand clap. Our heart here at Solid Rock is to share truth 
to live grace and to grow together. And with events like that and opportunities like that, we were able to share the gospel with so many people and so many lives. And I believe our community is impacted. And so thank you for supporting. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving to Praise in the Park uh, so we can do things like that. So come on, give yourself a hand clap. Come on. Thank you so much, church family. We appreciate it couple of quick announcements I have for you this morning, okay? On November the 10th, we are going to be honoring our veterans with a veteran service right here at the church. And so if you, uh, listen, I am thankful for our veterans who served, who have given their life so that we have a freedom to praise and to worship. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so on that day, we want to give honor and, 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 and just say thank you to them. So if you have a, a loved one or a family member who is serving or who has served, uh, maybe they've gone on to be with the Lord, maybe they gave their life uh, in, in the act of their service, uh, we would love for you to, to email a picture of them, their name and their rank, and send it to our church offices, and uh, we are going to give them honor on November the 10th, all right? Uh, I'm going to give you an email address, but probably the best thing to do is to call into the church next week. Ask what that email address is where you can write it down and our church administrator, uh, office administrator, they will help you out and get you the information you need. But if you can remember it, you can send that to julie at solidrockjc.com. That picture, the name, and the rank of the individual because we're going to honor on November the 10th. We're going to honor our veterans, all right? So remember that service. It's going to be a great time. On October the 20th, we are doing a child dedication service in our 1130 service. And uh, if you have a child that you would like to be dedicated, what is dedication? Dedication is you making a recognition that God blessed you with a child, even though they drive you crazy. God blessed you with a child. And you're saying, Father God, I'm making a covenant with you that I'm going to teach this child about you. And I, I surrender this child back unto you. And whatever whatever you want for their life, wherever you want to call them, whatever you want them to do. Um, my mom dedicated me and God chose to, to call me to the ministry. And I thank God every day for the calling that he's placed on my life. I do. I do. I do. So child dedication doesn't save them. It's simply you as a parent saying, God, thank you for the blessing. I give this blessing back to you. So if you would like to participate in that, to have your child dedicated, you can sign up on the app or you can go to guest information. That will take place on October the 20th, all right? And then on October the 20th at 1 o'clock over in the gym, our sheepdog, they're having their uh, their, their chili cook-off over there. The cost is $10 a person. If you are interested in entering the chili competition, you can go to guest information, and uh, they will give you details on how to do that, or you can, uh, you can call the office. Office, they'll give you Kenny's email address and you can take care of all of that there. But we're going to have a great time at the chili cook-off. I think I appreciate our sheepdogs. They sit among us. They watch over us. They keep us safe. You may say, is that necessary? In today's society, unfortunately, it is necessary, but I thank God for these men and women who have the heart to, 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 to sit among the sheep and to watch and to protect us. And so thank you to all of our volunteers, everybody, all of our dream team. You guys do a great job. Solid Rock would not function without you, our dream team. So thank you very much. Everybody stand to your feet with us, all right? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to sing a whole lot louder than you are on this next song. All right, tell them. Who's got a testimony this morning of the goodness of God? Who can stand with us and say, this is our God. This is what he does. And he saves and he moves us. Yes. Remember those walls that we built sin and shame. They like prisons that we couldn't escape.
you are here. Thank you, Jesus. And you are moving in ways that only you can do. And Lord, we're so thankful for the sweet aroma of the Holy Spirit that is here. We just want to continue worshiping you, Father. We want to lay it all down and say, here it is. Here, here I am.
so glad that we have a God that cares about everything that we are going through. I read in the scriptures when John the Baptist said, I must decrease and he must increase in my life. What he was saying was, I am making room for him. I'm making room for God. That's what he was speaking. In all of our ways, if we will acknowledge him, he'll direct our paths. And we can put our trust and confidence in him. I can tell you, my dear friends, George and Alma Land are making room for him today. They, we, we, we lost their son week before last. Wonderful husband, wonderful father, 41 years old, too early. But he's in the presence of God because he made room for God each and every day in his life. Now, now, maybe, now, now maybe the outcome wasn't what we wanted, but, but, but he's with God. He's, he's with God, and we can rejoice certainly in that. So whatever your need is today, whatever you're carrying today, whatever your shoulders are burdened down with today, whatever situation is calling you, causing you to feel anxious today, surrender to him. Make room for him right now. We're, they're going to sing it again as they do. Just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I'm making room. God, I'm making room that you can help me through this situation. In Jesus' name. Come on, no matter what it is. I don't care what it is. Just lift your hands up. Say, God, I need, I, I need you today. I'm making room. I'm making room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. so real to everyone that's in this building today because you know what we have need of even before we ask. So let your Holy Spirit breathe upon us as we honor you, God, and we will make room for you today in everything that we do that our hearts may be full of your presence and we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Come on, give the Lord a good hand, clap of praise, will. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, and we're so glad that you are here. And uh, before I get into what I want to share with you today, we, we, have been, uh, we, we, we have been monitoring and watching, and I know as you have, the nat the, just the natural disasters that we have had here in America. Through the hurricane, through the hurricane season, and first Hurricane uh, Helene, who went through Florida and Georgia and North Carolina and uh, Tennessee, all down through there, and then uh, on the heels of that, Hurricane Milton, and 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 just the devastation. Here's the first hurricane they're digging out from and still trying to get their lives back together, and still without w without uh, electricity, so many of them, and water, and then. Uh, here comes the second hurricane. We have men that are there, Kenny Branham and some of his team, because we are a disaster relief um, uh, partner with our with our organization and have a trailer. They're down there in some areas and cleaning up and trying to help uh, anybody that they possibly can. But we also have boots on the ground from our movement, from our, our organization that we are part of the Pentecostal Church of God. And um, our our, nat, our, our uh, national missions director, Andy Hunt, um, he's over these type of things here in America, and they've had these trailers there helping people. And, and I talked to him, he said, Pastor, he said, the greatest need we have, he said, we need finances for resources that's going to help these people in, in the areas that they are. And he said, it's devastating. He said, this is the worst that I've ever seen. So we today are, are going to receive an offering. 
And this, this comes from your heart. I want to ask our ushers to come and help us. This will come from your heart and what you want to do today. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. There are, there are needs. There are needs. And so let God's presence and God's touch help you, Lord, as we, as we, as we you know, just pray about this and ask God for his direction. It, it's not the amount. It's your heart. But whatever you can do, if you can give above and beyond, it's going to be a great blessing. And I give you this guarantee and promise. All of it will go to those people and helping them in this time of need. Okay? I promise you it will. All right. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts. Help us, God, to do your will that we may, God, be your hands extended, ministering to those who have lost everything that God are trying to pull their lives back together. And if we can help in some manner, Lord, I know it's going to be a blessing for them. So take it. God, multiply it. Use it, Lord, Father, that you can be glorified as, God, you care about those people. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can stand with me. Please stand with me all over the building and just bring your gifts, if you will. Uh, One of the ushers that are standing here and um, let... uh, let them, let them receive that from you. God bless you. Thank you so much. You are so wonderful to help out. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good, good, good. We love you. We appreciate what you're doing. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God love you. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. God love you today. You are making a difference with your gift. You're making a difference. We appreciate you. Amen, 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 amen. All right, can we give the Lord a good hand clap of praise, everybody, for the offering? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, I, I need to get into this because I, I, uh, I, uh, I need a little time. We are starting a, a brand new series, and bef- uh, before, I, before I read my scripture, I want to shout out to my wife, who is up with my daughter and our grandkids and our other kids and grandkids that, that had birthdays. We had two that had a birthday this week. My daughter's birthday is on Sunday, I mean on a, a Monday, and, um, and we went up after our convention on Friday and was at Six Flags, and, and can I just say this? The boss and the screaming eagle and, and all didn't bother me at all. I didn't write them, but it didn't bother me. I'm 72. I'm smarter than that, you know. So anyway, anyway, I'm going to give a shout out to my honey. I'd do better if you was here, but I know you're praying for me and pulling for me. So God bless you. Let me read these scriptures. Um, we're starting a new series today, The End Times. The, the end times, ladies and gentlemen, unless your head's been in the sand for the last 10 years and, or the last 20 years, you know that we are living in the end times. So let me read the scripture that, that Jesus shared in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 32. He says, now learn this parable from the fig tree, which uh, when its branches has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, you also uh, you, so you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the very doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, everybody say this generation. This generation, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things are fulfilled. I, I want to I wanna share with you for just a, a few uh, moments uh, this morning on, on the subject of the beauty of Bible prophecy, because we have to have the Bible prophecy to understand where we are and what God is certainly speaking to us today. Father, add your blessings unto the reading of the word, and we'll thank you for everything that is done in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Look at your neighbor and just say, I like you. Just tell them that, will you? I like you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I, uh, I had a, a, a little bit of a, a difficulty 
um, you know, uh, p- pulling this all together for, for whatever reason, but, but, but it's so important because it's going to be more analytical than it is anything else, and I want you to stay with me if you will, okay? If you'll stay with me, you'll, you'll learn something here. Approximately 30% of the Bible uh, is, is prophetic in nature. You knew that, didn't you? I, I mean, 30% of it, and, and, and most of the prophecies in the Bible are concerning the end times and our generation. So, so, so we can identify with this. It, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 22, and this is not, uh, I don't think they got, I, I give it to them, to, so this is in there, but Jesus said, in fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive, but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Now, so many things that we are seeing in Matthew chapter 24 that has been fulfilled or is being fulfilled as we live out our lives here is about the second coming of Jesus Christ when he's going to come and set up his millennial kingdom. Well, can I remind you as believers that the rapture of the church is going to take place seven years before that? Hallelujah. So... So, so what I'm trying to say, it's, it's here. And the Bible is beautiful. And we can make a practical application about the beauty of, of the Christian story as an alternative to uh, the other stories that the world might be telling today. And there's a lot of them that's out there. A lot of things that are taking place. But let me share, if I can, as, um, as a comparison and an example, which story is better. Okay? Let me, let me, let me share that with you. We live in a world with many beautiful things. Story number one, yet much of it is desperately broken, broken, including people, and nothing can be done about it except to survive it and make it marginally better until we die, and after that, there's nothing. That's, that's the first story. There's nothing. The second story, we live in a beautiful world with many beautiful things, yet much of it is desperately broken, including people. However, we believe that someone created that beauty, and the brokenness is not his doing or his intent. And he intends good for, the, for both the world and the people in it. And the fact that the creator cared so much for his creation that he became one of us and took all of the pain and the brokenness on himself, even to the point of dying for it. And even so that that did not end the story, he rose from the dead. Glory to God. Come on, somebody shout. He rose from the dead and is recreating the world, beginning with the people who will follow him and who will receive him. And ladies and gentlemen, one day he will fix absolutely everything. Glory to God. So we have that promise in God. Now, which story is better? Well, the second story is better. And the second story is better because it certainly is true. And God's story from the beginning to the end is the most beautiful thing that you're ever going to hear or see or read because it is the story of God. On the other hand, can I just remind us all, and we need to understand this from time to time, our human story was ugly and extremely disappointing. We can look at it and understand that, what we have come out of. And if it weren't for the fact that God chose to become part of our story because of his great love, then it would be a very, very sad story indeed. So let us see the beauty of prophecy that God has given unto us because this is a beautiful book. Can I get a good amen? Absolutely a beautiful book that the Lord has given to us. And I, I, I want to I wanna give you five quick truths uh, about Bible prophecy and how important that it is because the Bible's prophetic material, it distinguishes it from any other book that has ever been written or any other book that is in the world today. And so here are some of these truths, uh, five truths. Number one, the only one who can predict the future with absolute certainty is the one who controls it or is, that, or is a direct representative of the 
who controls it. Ladies and gentlemen, God controls the future. He created the world. The world is his and all of the fullness thereof. And he has brought all of these pieces of this prophetic puzzle together that I'm going to share with you even from the beginning when he, when he talks about in the book of Genesis that the seed of the woman is going to uh, bruise the serpent's head. That was, that was a prophecy concerning Jesus Christ being crucified and dying on the cross that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly. But he has brought us unto that place. And, and as we see this, we began to understand it. So God controls the future. And consequently, God's messages about the future are our only reliable source of truth about it. Only this. Only this right here. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what the uh, mediums of New Jersey say. I don't, I don't care about the, uh, you know, the, the uh, psychic uh, friends network and, and the, you know, and all of that kind of mess we had a couple of years ago and all the, all the palm readers and stuff. Isn't that something, that psychic network, uh, they went bankrupt. You thought they'd have seen that coming, wouldn't you? Honestly. I, I mean, really, you know, you, you thought they would have seen it, but, but, but they didn't. But God controls it and, and, and the truth. And thank God that we have the truth that God ministers unto us and helps us. That's number one. Number two, another truth about prophecy. God gives us prophecy to warn the unbelievers and to comfort the believers. He gives it to us. And, and, and the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again and the Bible prophecy that has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled right before our eyes, that is a great witnessing tool that you can use whenever you talk to individuals. And God will open up these doors because people are always concerned about what's going to happen in the future. And you can begin to share with them because God would that none should perish. He didn't want anybody to die and go to hell. He didn't create hell for people. He created it for the devil and his angels. And if people go there, they go uninvited and they go as trespassers because the Lord wants them to be saved. Not only to unbelievers, his prophecy become a, such a great, uh, you know, tool, but also it is a comfort to believers. That's why Jesus said, when you see all of these things taking place, when all of these things are falling into place, lift up your head because your redemption is drawing nigh. That means that we can be comforted in our hearts. And, and I don't know, how do you respond when you hear Bible prophecy? How do you respond when things are shared about the end time? If you are fearful and in and, and, and consternation, then maybe you aren't ready for the return of the Lord and you need to make some change in your life. Maybe you need to back up and say, hey, I, I feel uncomfortable, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't because it should be a comfort if you're a child of God. Because this is the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ and what we live our life for. I am hopeful today. I can't speak for anybody else in this building, but I can tell you I have hope. There is a lamb that's better. I'm telling you, there is a place that God has prepared for those that love him and have received him. Praise God. Amen, 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 amen. So, so thank God for, for, for all of these things. Now, here's the third about prophecy. Sorry, my mic's clipping on me up here, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it out there where it's not doing that. All right, here, here's the third thing. Prophecy uh, gives us the assurance that all the Bible is true. This is a true book, and. This is a true book, how it is woven together from Genesis to Revelation and every piece of the puzzle fitting together. Yes, but it was written by men, men who were inspired and directed by the Holy Spirit. That's why it fits together completely. And you can see that scarlet thread running through every scripture and everything that is given to us from the Word of God. And so God has prepared this, and, and it's unadulterated. It is, it is absolutely truthful in every area that it gives to us. There's not one thing, even though people will try to tell you, oh, it's not true. It's not true. That's not the way that it is. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. The Word of God is true. People change. People change. Well, you know, it's not like it used to be. No, but this is like it used to be. 
And, and, and this is what we are standing upon and certainly depending on today. He has given us the assurance. And the Bible tells the truth about the future. Well, how do you know? Because many things the Bible tells us will happen, has happened, and is happening. I, 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 mean, I mean, right now. And, and the Bible uh, foretells that we have this, you know, as God fulfills it, it, it what, what has been foretold, that we have concrete measurable proof that the Bible and all its prophecies are true, are absolutely true. And man, when you see these things happening, here's the fourth truth that I want to share with you. The Bible and the Christian faith have no rival that can help us understand the future. No other book, no other religion can, can come close to predicting the future in advance the way that the Word of God has and, and the prophecy that God has given to us. And then the fifth truth, confirmation of the Bible. Uh, the Bible's truth depends on the truth of its prophetic writings. Now, can I tell you how significant and important that that statement is? If those prophecies don't come true, then the credibility of the entire Bible is in jeopardy. It's, it's in jeopardy. And also, I'm telling you, uh, including the claims of Jesus Christ. But we know that it is true. And we know that the Lord has, has brought these things. And, and, and you know, the proof of, of, of the prophet is if the prophecy comes forth. And the prophets have prophesied. And the word of God has told us. And it's in the book. It's in the book. And we've seen it before our very eyes that has come to pass. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad that we have a hope and that God has given us a future. Praise God. Paul said, if I only had hope in this world, I'd be of all people most miserable. But his hope goes beyond that, this world. Our hope is beyond this world. This world's going to melt away in a fervent heat. Amen. But the word of God abides forever. And we're going to abide in the presence of the Lord forever and forever. If you believe that, can we give him a good praise, everybody? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 There's no mystery here. The Bible's truth is easy to measure. And, and we know the accuracy of the Bible uh, prophecies because they are uh, incredibly just specific in what they say and what they do. Even the ones concerning Christ coming to this earth to be born in Bethlehem. You, you look at prophecies and how that they, just, they are just laid out. Now, I, I want to share some of these prophecies real quickly with you uh, regarding Israel, which is the barometer for all of Bible prophecy, the barometer for the end times. I, I mean, it's, it's what we, we have to be looking to because the Bible gives us the conditions of the end times and specifically those, who are relate, those that are related to Israel. So, so we see this and we certainly understand that. That's why Jesus, when he was at the Temple Mount and the disciples came to him and, and you know, and the disciples, uh, you know, ask about the end time. He said, all of these events. Now, hear me. He said, all of these events would happen in a single generation, a, a single generation. And many of these events have already taken place in our generation with more that is sure to follow. You ready? We are that generation. I, I, I said we are that generation. And, and, and we, we have to be aware of this. That's why in Acts chapter 2 and verse 16 that, that Peter stands up and, and, and Peter says this, the, the Holy Spirit had fell and the church was birthed and people were filled with the Holy Spirit and 3,000 people were saved on that particular day. And, and Peter says, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. He gives, he gives a word that, 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 is, that, that is a prophetic, uh, the fulfillment. He said, this is the fulfillment of that spoken word that Joel spoke, uh, you know, and, and, and gave to us. And he says this in Acts chapter 2 and verse 16. So, so what we are seeing and what we are realizing and what God is bringing to the forefront, you know, God is fulfilling what he promised a long time ago. And God has promised all of these prophecies about Israel in the Bible into this beautiful pattern. So what he has spoken is coming to pass. What he has said is coming to pass. And, and we see this. Let me, give you some, let me give you some prophecies, if I may. 
Number one, Israel is gathered twice back to, back, back to their homeland. The Bible prophecies that Israel will be gathered again twice after being scattered. Isaiah 11, verse 10 through 12. It says, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt and Pathros and Cush and Elam and Shinar and Hamath and the islands of the sea. And he will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. In other words, bringing them back in. Now, now you remember the story in the Old Testament for 70 years, a defeated Israel would both suffer and languish in Babylon. And they were there as a result of their idolatry and their rejection of But remember, they were the chosen people of God, but God would not allow it to stay that way forever. And we know that in 586 BC, the return began. This was before Christ. Then in 516, the temple of Jerusalem was was rebuilt and the walls of Jerusalem was rebuilt and occupied by the people of Israel. Then God fulfilled his promise again in 1948. Now, let me tell you about that. Israel is born in one day. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 8. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day, or shall a nation be born all at once? That for as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth unto her children. May chapter, uh, uh, May, not chapter, May the 14th, 1948. Great Britain's colonial mandate for Palestine expires and they release the territory. When they did, there was individuals who were waiting. And before the day was over, Ben, uh, ben uh, David Ben-Gurion, the, the, he was the, over the Jewish agency and would become prime minister, announced the establishment of the state of Israel all in one day. Here's, here's uh, you know, Britain releasing, releasing the territory, and here's, uh, here's the Jewish state being established, Israel. And our president, Harry Truman, was the first one to very quickly to identify Israel as a nation. There was others that held back and still are today, you know, uh, just the, the United Nations and, and so many that's on there that hate Israel. But, but thank God for our president in 1948 said, yes, there are a nation. They are being established as a nation. Can I tell you that's why that America is blessed today like no other nation in the world. Come on, come on. No other nation. Hallelujah. That was number two. Here's another prophecy. Israel is regathered from the north and as they begin to to build, where's the people going to come from? You know, it begins to be rebuilt from where, where would they come from? Well, they come from Europe. They come from Americas. They, 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 they came, and from 1989 to 2002, 2002, 1.1 million Russian Jews immigrated to Israel. Not, not uh, only that, but those that come from Europe. And I was on one of those planes making trips to Israel. And I've been on those planes, those commercial airlines. And when you, you, you're there and, and, and there's some that's coming home for the, you know, for the first time in, in their life. And here they are coming back to Israel. And as they're coming back and that plane hits that tarmac, they're weeping, they're crying, they're praising God, they're glorifying God because they are coming home. And that's a Bible prophecy that's being fulfilled. And they know that, and they recognize that, and they, they, they receive that. Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 14 tells us about it. The days are coming, says the Lord, that it shall no more be said. The Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. The Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Do you know that Mikhail Gorbachev, that, that you know, their borders are so tight. Their borders are tight, but he opened up the borders and 1.1 million Jews left Russia and came back to Israel. I'm telling you, God can move on the heart of anybody, can't he? Huh? Come on, praise God. 
Praise God. So, so we see this. And then here's the fourth, here's the fourth prophecy. Jerusalem is retaken, uh, is retaken by the Jews. Luke chapter 21. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be a great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations, And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now, in A.D. 70, there was a Roman general by the name of Titus that invaded Israel. This is 70 years after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, And and he he is there, and he literally destroys Jerusalem. He, he absolutely destroys it. And the Jews were scattered for 1,900 years all over the place. I, I, I mean, in different nations, they were just scattered. They were scattered, and the Bible speaks of this. But in 1948, they began to return to their homeland, as I said. And then in 1967, in 67, Israel engaged in what was the Arab-Israeli war. I, I remember it. I, I remember watching it. There was a general by the name of Marsha Diane, and he had a patch on his eye. Some of you older folks are going to remember that. And he was a tremendous general. But, uh, but on that day, and it was called the Six-Day War, because Israel, even though they were surrounded on June the 10th, 1967, they regained, they absolutely regained control of Jerusalem, and it remains in their hands today. That, that war was incredible. I, I read some of the things that happened, and, and, and there was miracle after miracle after miracle that their armies passed through certain areas, and there were enemies all around them that didn't even see them. Does that sound familiar? That sounds something like that happened in the Old Testament also. You know, that God was just making a way and watching out for them. And they, they just walked away from, from, from all their equipment and their tanks and, and, and you know, and just uh, troop carriers and just walked away from them and left them. And, and I've, I've seen them with my own eye. Look, when God gets ready to do something, let me tell you, there's not a force on this planet that can keep him from doing what he wants to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and so we, we, we get this and we see it. And, and then here's the last prophecy that I want to share with you. The land of Israel is, is, is divided. I'm talking about the land and coupled with worldwide anti-Semitism. You, you see it. It's rampant even in the United Nations. And I was appalled to see the, the youth of America... The youth of America in the colleges and different ones just, just protesting and saying that Israel has committed genocide and Israel needs to be destroyed and just, Israel doesn't need to exist. That's what that chant, you know, uh, you know from, from the rivers to the, you know, to the sea and they're, they're chanting all these things. It's about the annihilation of Israel. There are people groups that has it in their mandate. It, it's there in their manifesto that Israel has to be annihilated completely, everybody. That's what they are desiring. Let me tell you something. They are God's people. And, and all of this anti-Semitism that's taken place and the hatred that is there. And under the pressure of the United Nations, Israel has been forced to, rel- to relinquish control portions of, of their land. You know, uh, control of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip and the, uh, and the Sinai Peninsula. They've been under international pressure to concede, the, you know, the East Jerusalem to the Palestinians. And, and they say, you know, you need to give this up. Joel chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up whose land? He said, my land. They've divided up my land. 
You know what this is telling me? Can I just share with you? You know what this is telling me? Jesus is coming soon. I said Jesus is, is, is coming soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And whenever God selected Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and said, I am going to make of you a great nation. And he had faith in God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness and salvation, and now we are the seed of Abraham. No, we're not the main branch. We're not the main branch. We are are not, uh, you know, physically Jews, but we are spiritual Jews, and we have been grafted in because the Lord would that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance, and they have rejected the Messiah, but he still has made a way for you and I that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's why we are here. Because of the Jewish people, it's why we are here. And why we have, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, was a Jew. Was a Jew, and he died for our sins. I am so glad today that I have a relationship with him. I'm so glad today that God's word is true and that we can trust him in all things. There's an old saying, and our musicians can come. There's an old saying that goes, the Bible is more up to date than tomorrow's newspaper. I believe that. Come on. I I, I believe that. That's not just preacher talk. That is absolutely the truth. And God's biblical prophecies are clear and verifiable, and, and, and they are undeniably true, and the pieces fall together into a remarkable, unbroken pattern that God has planned, that God has put together, and you can see it as you read the scriptures. And we are seeing Bible prophecies fulfilled in front of our eyes, and some are in the process of coming to fruition. And Jesus is coming for his church very soon. Hallelujah. Coming for his church. Don't, don't wait to prepare your heart. Don't, don't wait and say, well, I can, I can put this off. Can you? Can, can, can you put it off? You feel comfortable putting it off? What if he comes today? I can tell you there's not a prophecy in here that has to be fulfilled. Uh, for, uh, you know, that, that would keep Jesus from rapturing the church and taking us out today. Not a one. Not a one. Could this be the day? <laughs> Could this be the day? Could we walk out here? Could we be eating dinner? Could we be sitting around with our family and the trumpet sounds? God looks over and says, it's time. Blow the trumpet. This is the time. This is the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God.